Welcome to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku. Today we have a brand new mini series for you. On this series, we are on the hunt for invasive species. Whether it be species that cause harm to the ecosystem or a species that is not native to the region. It could be fish, shellfish, small game, or even plants. We're gonna hunt them down, teach you a little bit about them, but most importantly, make something tasty. This is Deliciously Invasive. On this first episode of Deliciously Invasive, we're talking about the pike minnow, AKA squawfish. And now back in 98, they officially changed the name from squawfish to pike minnow because it was a derogatory term for indigenous people. And I just learned of this doing some research. So you'll hear me say squawfish a little bit here in the clip that you're about to see, but know that the official and proper name is pike minnow. And the one we're talking about is the Sacramento pike minnow. There's also the northern pike minnow, which uh, is found in the Pacific Northwest. And both of these species are native to the area. But we're supposed to be talking about invasive species on this series here that we're doing. So why are we talking about this native fish? Well, I wanted to talk about it because one, I just caught one recently and they are oftentimes confused as invasive species because they're a threat to the salmon population, salmon and steelhead and trout. The pike minnow eat the roe of the uh, salmon and steelhead as well as eat the babies, um, the baby fish as well. So they are a threat to the salmon population and that's why some people mistake them as invasive species, although they are a native species. All right, so we want to just bring a little bit of awareness to that. So we are gonna tackle this on our first episode. No, that was a smaller, smaller taps. But it went doop doop doop. But that first first bite was pretty decent. Squawfish on, squawfish on. <laughs> it was right when I was reeling it back, <laughs> reeling it back in. So I didn't even see the bobber go down. I was just reeling it back. Tiny. All right, there you go, that's a squawfish. This is a small one, Adam caught a couple bigger ones. Take them out though. Yeah, check out this one that Adam caught. Oh shoot, still alive. Much bigger. That one's 18, maybe 18 inches. Take them out of the river system. I'm wearing gloves because I've been putting a bunch of eggs on, on for bait and it's uh, real sticky. So I just need to give me some gloves to put on. Alright, we're gonna move down a little bit further. So we're using bobber and eggs, barbless hook. So we get another little squawfish. Maybe make a squawfish video. These fish are oftentimes caught as bycatch while fishing for salmon and steelhead in the rivers and a lot of fishermen leave them out 
on the side of the bank, the river bank, just for them to die and be gone, gone to waste. Uh, as native species, we should show them a little bit more respect by creating some kind of delicious meal out of them or even using them just as crab bait or even garden fertilizer just so they're not going to waste. And it's actually uh, illegal in the state of California for you to catch fish and just kill them and waste them. That is actually technically illegal, so you can be fine for doing that. On this channel, on Outdoor Chef Life, our main goal is to create something delicious and sustainable out of what we catch and harvest ourselves. And one of our main goals is to waste little fish as possible, and hopefully you are inspired to do the same as well. So enough talking, let's get to the cooking. Okay, I have already gutted them and gilled them. So we're gonna do a quick fillet on them and I'm gonna scrape off all of the meat. What I've heard with these pike minnows is that they're very bony. So even people that have eaten them, they said, ah, they probably won't eat it again because it's so bony. I think I have a solution to that. All right, we'll just get to filleting right away. Cut the head off first. Now should you harvest them or let them go since they're native species? Well, you should still definitely harvest them anytime you catch them, uh, even as bycatch. Just don't put them to waste. Yeah, take them as crab bait at least. one side filleted, do the other side. This front bone is really thick. Alright, take the ribcage off. Ribcage seems to be pretty normal, like a normal fish so far. Nope. Now I have a spoon. And what we're gonna do is just scrape the meat off of this guy. And that way, hopefully, we'll be able to avoid most of the pin bones. This is where it seems to be problematic for people. There's a lot of pin bones here. So when you scrape it, it kinda leaves that behind. And you just get the meat. Towards the tail, there should be no more pin bones, hopefully. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I think we're good here. I'm gonna do that with the rest of the fillets. Okay, now we have all the meat scraped off. I'm just gonna double check for some small pin bones that may be in here, like this one. Now, I'm gonna take my knife and just chop all of this up. We'll have a good grouping of bones here. When the fish is fresh, their muscles are still very tight and they kind of hold on to those pin bones a lot more. Okay, finely chopped, basically mushed. See that? I'm gonna put this in the bowl. A little red onion. So I'm gonna do a little finely dice. finely chopped there. Toss that into a bowl. This might as well go with the rest of this. Half an onion. Got parsley going in. A little salt and pepper.
Oh, you know what? We're also going to add a little olive oil. A nice drizzle. And a little bit of panko as well. Maybe about a quarter cup. And we'll mix that up. And with this, we are going to create some fish balls. We're doing fish balls again, but this time we're steaming them. And have the panko in there, just give it a little airiness. And we're actually making sort of a Mediterranean style pita wrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and make balls and just drop it into my steamer. Now we'll put the lid on them and steam them for about 14 minutes. While that's going, let's work on the sauce. Yes, let me get some mint from the garden. Ooh, thank you. You can take each other one. There's some on this side, some on this side. Dun 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 dun. Mint. Got a little bit of mint here. Just a little bit. We're starting off with some plain Greek yogurt. To that, we're gonna add a couple lemons of lemon juice. Yeah, that will be good. And I'm also gonna chop up some dill. As well as that mint we just grabbed. A couple cloves of garlic. Okay, we'll go in with this. And we have our lemon juice. Let's try with one and a half lemons first. And that's about the right consistency I'm looking for. And we're just going to add some salt and pepper to that. That tastes delicious. Now we'll slice up a few vegetables that we're going to top it with and we'll plate. We don't need too much. How do you usually like the cucumbers in there? Long ways? A little long. And a little bit of lettuce. Now we've got a few minutes left for these fish balls and we'll be done. I think the meatballs should be done now. Let's uh, turn the heat off and check them out. I'm gonna just cut one open with the spoon and see if it's done cooking. Oh yeah. You know what, I think I take back the punko. You don't really need it. It made it a little, made it almost a little too fluffy. Let's just give it a taste though. Really good still actually. It's really, the flavor is really good. Let me heat up the pita. Let's plate. We'll start with the sauce. Just right down the middle. Bit of onion. Lettuce. Oh, I forgot the tomato. Sort of forgot. It's okay. Cucumber. Some feta. And then we'll finish it off with a little bit more sauce. I think we're done. Here we have it guys. A little pike minnow fish ball pita wrap. This smells delicious and the fish balls that I already tasted are very good and the whole combination. I think it's gonna be delicious. First, let's cheers. A cold one. Cheers. <sighs> to a new series mini-series of invasive species. I'm excited for this actually, um, for, for the uh, actual, well the dish and 
for the series too. I think we're gonna do some fun stuff, some cool stuff, new species. All right, here we go, let's try. Mm. Now that is a pita wrap. Mm, Not fishy at all. Not fishy, huh? Mm -mm. That's tasty. I mean, so much herb, so much freshness. The lemon juice in the sauce, and it just lifts everything up. It's so light. I don't know if I would guess this is fish. <laughs> <laughs> if I would have fried it, you would have thought this was a, a falafel. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely really solid, really good. I mean, it tastes as a fish, like the, the flavor of the fish itself, very mild. It's, it's, it's good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with it at all. This can definitely be one that you take home to the dinner plate easily. Even if you didn't catch any salmon or steelhead that day, if you got some pike minnow, they'll make good dinner like we're having tonight. This is good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat another one after this. <laughs> then we got a few balls left. Oh yeah. My pita's breaking. <laughs> so in conclusion, pike minnow is definitely a good eating fish. It's not bad at all. Uh, there are a lot of little bones in there, the pin bones, where you can avoid them just by doing what I did there. And yeah, prepare it that way. Try it out. Tell us, let me know how it, you like it. And for this deliciously invasive series, uh, the next one we're planning on doing is an actual invasive species, the European green crab. It's one of the most ferocious invasive species ever. So look forward to that one. Hopefully we get to do that one very soon because I know there's definitely some around. Um, but if you have any suggestions on what invasive species we should target, let me know in the comments and make sure if you like the video hit the thumbs up subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one peace